Totally. Totally. I mean, we could pull in the old Jim Rohn quote, you know, be, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yep. And, exactly. and teen- teenagers don't want to hear that. A lot of adults don't want to hear that. Oh, no, you know, I got to just stay in this stinking job with these, you know, whiners and complainers. And I got to stick around, you know, family that's pulling me down. Well, just recognize what that's doing to yourself. And this is not some kind of elitist thing to just separate yourself from people that you do love and care about. But you better be careful about investing a lot of time. And I have relatives that I'll spend three hours a year with and be very generous, you know, and gracious during but there's no way I'm going to spend three <laughs> well, days. Give me we some, are going give on vacation some together. Uh, give me some names there, Dan. I'm curious. Which, which relatives are we talking about? <laughs> uh, We've all golly. got them. We've all got them. Uh, you know, I know exactly what you're saying. Yes, sir. Um, you know, as, as my dad is fond of saying, I mean, he, he likes to sum things up and it's drop some wisdom, truth, and some very short phrases. And he says, you know, basically there's givers and takers out there. Wow. You know, there's, yeah. you know, there's givers and takers. You know what a giver is going to be doing? With most of his time, you know what a taker is going to be doing with most of his time. You know, Jim, you mentioned the the things that you grew up with, and sure, I can tell my stories too. You know, I grew up without radio or TV in the house at all. Well, um, it, part of it was economic, but a lot of it was the really strict religious environment that I grew up in. Now, here's the deal. Without that, it drove me to books. Books opened up a world of opportunity to me and continue to serve me well today. There's a couple German psychologists who coined the term desirable difficulties. And I love that because often the thing that we see as a disadvantage turns out to be our greatest asset. I mean, the the CEO of JetBlue, the airline, is severely dyslexic. He says if there were a pill to take that away, he would not do it because that difficulty opened so many creative doors for him and led to the kind of success that he has now. Oh. And even when we look at, this, we look at the story of David and Goliath, you know, the title of one of Malcolm Gladwell's books. Right. Well, we, we think David, my gosh, you know, he wasn't trained as a soldier. He didn't have all the equipment. He didn't have a helmet, a shield, a spear. He was just a short, scrawny little guy. And here he comes up, this amazing giant who was well-trained as a soldier. Surely David is disadvantaged. No. He was quick, nimble. He was he didn't know you were supposed to do hand to hand combat. He kept his distance and with his accuracy and experience with a sling took down a giant. But desirable difficulties. A lot of, I want to encourage people, you know, to recognize how often that works to your favor rather than your disadvantage. Yeah, it becomes a platform, right? It becomes a platform for your message. It certainly can. A lot of people have used it as such, yes. Yeah. Here's the things I had to overcome. Now that journey of overcoming them can be really rough. And I don't want to downplay that, but I'm right there with you, Dan, that I think and that's one of the reasons that I just really love hanging out with and encouraging and spending time with entrepreneurs because you can't be self-centered and serve well. If you're going to succeed as an entrepreneur, you've got to serve well. If you're self-centered and your life's all about you and poor old me and my life is terrible, I, you just don't meet many entrepreneurs who have who care around that blank, that wet blanket of just, oh, life is terrible and things will never be better. Entrepreneurs have to have an air of optimism, uh, an outlook that the future is going to be better than the present, that I can make some great things happen. So I love entrepreneurs because step one of having any success in business is some optimism about the future. Otherwise, why would you risk your capital and your energy and your time in, in trying to build something? Shouldn't you be building a bomb shelter and storing canned goods under your house? I mean, if you really oh think my. that the world's ending, like, you know, that's where you go, you know, feel sorry for yourself and your whole. But those of us who are looking forward saying the future is awesome, there's great potential there. I love entrepreneurs and I know you do too. Does that bring any thoughts to mind? Oh, absolutely. In 48 Days to the Work You Love, I have 